Glory to God. Are you guys blessed that you're here? Hebrews chapter number 5 and verse number 12 to verse number 14. Verse 14. Kings, 1 Kings 19 has been the build up of what we are looking at. Diet well. Now we want to cover this and we want to wrap it up. We are looking at the title Diet Well. And the idea is that in the journey of life, one of the key things that God will always make available for capacity building is diet. I made it very clear that there are three things that God does in capacity building or generally when we talk about capacity building. One is diet, number two is exercise, and number three is right environment. So whenever we are looking at the aspect of that, we were able to build it up uh, over several points. I was able to mention that diet basically gives you emotional balance. Diet causes you to rest. That is the right diet. And number three, diet will manifest your hidden potential or will manifest what you really are on the inside. And number four, diet gives you drive and motivation. So every time you diet well, these are the things that you will be able to experience. But I want to climax it today. So I'll be reading Hebrews chapter 5. I will dance through other scriptures, including First Kings. And uh, verse number 12, the Bible says, For when, for when, uh, for, when uh, for when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye need, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And I become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. So, the writer here is addressing a group of people that he's expecting them to be in a different season. But it looks as though they have been regressing or they were stagnated. And so that tells you that your diet matters when it comes to your progress. Amen. Uh, look at verse 13. The Bible says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful. Everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Why? Because he is a babe. So I want you to read for me verse number 14, if you do not mind. Want to go? But... To discern both good and what? And evil. Looking at this scripture, you will notice that the writer was writing to a group of Jews that were actually scattered abroad after the great persecution. The idea behind what he was doing, if you study the entire book of Hebrews, was to try to rebuke them not to go back to Judaism. Because Judaism, at that particular time during the great persecution, seemed to be more of a secure religion. Christianity was being persecuted right, left, and center. But the Roman Empire was in great agreement with the Jews and the Jewish community. So those that were born again were being persecuted. So many of the Christian Jews, or what we consider as Messianic Jews, began to reconsider to go back to Judaism. So the writer of Hebrews, whom we consider to be Paul, began to rebuke them. He was telling them very clearly, if there was no fault found in the first, or at first a covenant, then there would be no need of a second one. So he's constantly rebuking them and telling them that the things that were in the Old Testament were a foreshadow of the things yet to come. And everything we see now in manifestation is the reality of what Christ is in totality. So then Paul comes to a level where he tells him very clearly that you guys are supposed to be teachers as for this stage of your life. But it looks as though you behave like children, like those that need to be taught again. And then he explains two types of diet. He tells them very clearly there is milk for babes and there is strong meat for those that are mature and those that have exercised themselves to discern both what is good and evil. Now, what that tells you in clarity is that diet determines your transitions in seasons. Diet determines your transition in seasons. That is to mean, in other words, that every diet you partake in your life builds your capacity to secure your next level in life. Most of the times why people end up stagnant or regressing is because they are not dieting equivalent to the future that they are preparing for. Ephesians chapter number 3 and verse number 20 the Bible says very clearly now to him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we ask, think or imagine, Amplified Bible. So there is asking, there is thinking and there is imagination. So whatever you ask, you must have a mindset or you must have thought about it. Whatever you ask and you have never thought before, it means you don't have the capacity for it. Life will only offer to you what you are built for. Life will never give to you what you are never prepared for. If you look at Matthew chapter number 25, Jesus talking from verse number 14 of a king that was about to go for a journey that are three of his servants. And he distributed to each one of them talents to the first one, five. And the Bible says, according to his several abilities, to the second one, two, according 
according to his several abilities. And to the last one, one, according to his several abilities. The idea of the king was to give them the opportunity to exercise himself. So he left the one that had five, the one that had two, and the one that had one, and then told them very clearly, do business until I come. Scripture records when he came back, the one that had five made five others. The one that had two made two others. The one that had one began to complain and ended up being punished. If you read your Bible carefully, you will realize that if I can make two out of two, it means I have the capacity to generate a 100% result. Are you following me well? If I have five and I can make five, it means I have the same ability. Now what God was teaching us there is that God was giving us a lesson that the one that had two can still grow it anyhow. But what was given to him first was because of his ability. Whatever you have now is because that is what you can handle. I'll repeat that again. Whatever you have now is because that is what you can be able to handle. If you ever complain about the things you do not have by telling people and also turning to God and telling him you should give me better, God looks at you and he says, I have finished everything that should be finished. I gave it now to you. You choose whatever you desire. So that means, in other words, it is up to me to build capacity for the things I aspire for. So even whenever you look at the aspect of diet, diet builds capacity. Mark chapter number 4 and verse number 24. Mark 4, 24 and 25. Observe this scripture. I've always quoted it many times, but I want to repeat it here so that we could be able to understand. The Bible says, be careful therefore what you hear. Mark 4 and verses number 24. And he said unto them, take heed what ye hear. With the measure that ye, I mean, with what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that are here shall more be given. Every time you feed, you increase capacity. And to you that here shall more be given. If you want to be a millionaire, keep on hearing. I said, keep on hearing. I said again, keep on hearing. When a doctor goes to school, before I come back to this scripture, who is doing medicine, a child, I mean a young man who wants to do medicine, and wants to turn out to become a doctor, the first degree they would end up doing for the six years of uh, what we call study, the seventh year that they would go for internship. After they come out, they are called a GP or what we call a general practitioner. They are thrown anywhere and they can do anything. But in case they want to rise a notch higher, and their salary scale to change automatically, and to be received in a different way, they are supposed to go back to school. So they would go and do masters, and the person would make a decision whether I would master in surgery, whether I would master in neurosurgery, whether I would master in pediatrics, are you understanding me? Whether I would master in gy gynecology, whichever they will master. That means the moment he masters on one area, he's no longer the same with any other doctor. His status automatically changes. Listen, if you keep on hearing, more shall be added to you. Every increase you desire is dependent on your diet. Hear God, you will multiply your days. Now your amen is not as good as my preaching. Slap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I want to keep on hearing. <laughs> Look at the other one, give them a high five, tell them neighbor, I want to keep on hearing. Proverbs chapter 21 and verses number 28. Proverbs 21 and verse 28, part B of the King James translation. Proverbs 21 and verse 28, part B of the King James translation. Listen to what it says. Let me just start with part A. A false witness shall perish. So people that don't see things clearly don't go far. People that have no sense of clarity have no element of progress. They will die with time. You can't lie for very long. Lies always fail, but truth always rebounds back. You cannot beat truth. You don't even need to defend it. Truth always succeeds. But lies have a limitation. Oh, come on. You need to help me out here. But look at what he says. But the man that hear it. Speak it constantly. As long as you hear, your voice is ever going forward. Now this scripture is very powerful because to understand this scripture, you look at Ezekiel chapter 37. The Bible says, I prophesied as I was commanded. The Bible says, and God said unto him, Son of man, can these bones live again? And the man Ezekiel turned to God. He said, Lord, you are the only one that knows. And the scripture says, and the Lord said unto him, prophesy. The moment he opened his mouth, the bones are recovered. Every impact and result you will gain is dependent on your hearing. I will repeat again Mark chapter 4 and verse 24. Be careful what you hear. For to the same measure you hear is the same measure that will be given back to you. For he that, that hears shall more. I want to declare more to somebody here. I said I declare more to somebody here. You've been coming for lunch hour every time you are hearing this voice. I'm not talking about sitting down, hearing. You may sit down but you're not hearing. Every time you are hearing, may more health. 
come your way may more healing come your way may more breakthrough come your way may more results come your way he that heareth shall more give it. diet determines your change or your transitions in seasons somebody here you've been stuck in one season i advise you keep on hearing kenneth copeland who is classified to be the richest preacher in the world Initially, I used to argue back because I would check out the 10 most richest preachers in the world. They would put the classification, Bishop David Oedepo, at 150 million US dollars. This is about two years ago by Forbes magazine. Second one would be Bishop T.D. Jakes, who was actually on the same class at 150 million US dollars. Now, the first thing I would actually argue with you is that you can never really classify an African man's wealth. You can't. I wish I had an amen right there. Bishop Oedepo, the moment you begin to classify him according to Forbes magazine, you're looking at the universities he has. You are looking at maybe the salary he's being given. But let me tell you something about pastors. Pastors don't lead by salary. Pastors don't lead by things that are just institutionalized. I mean, pastors also lead by things we call miracles. Somebody walks into the office and people like Bishop Oedepo have had some of his sons giving him $100 million. What are you saying? Now your amen is going under one day, a particular man had gone to see Bishop, I mean, Pastor David, I mean, Pastor Abi, uh, uh, Adeboe. And while he was going in there, the guy had actually carried 100 million US dollars. He had come to bless the man of God. The secretary met him and the guy said, please, I have to see the man of God. It is urgent. I have a seat for him. And that is when the secretary looked at the fellow and told the fellow, please, you can just wait here. And if you are in a hurry, you can leave it. Go, it will be delivered. The man was so agitated. He said, no, nothing like that. I have to see him personally. The seed I have brought him, I have to give it to him. <laughs> it was 100 million naira, sorry. And so by insistence, later on, according to the story, the guy pushed his way and went into the office. Pastor Deboy looked at the young man. He asked the young man, young man, so how are you doing? He said, I'm okay. He said, sir, I have come that I want to honor you with this offering of 100 million naira. And please, I ask you to receive it because it is my gift to you. I'm believing God for a great miracle. The moment the man went ahead and was giving it out, a devil looked at him and told him, didn't the secretary tell you to leave it at the, I mean, I, I mean at the office and you could go, I would have still received it. The man said, sir, I just felt I couldn't trust the secretary. And that is when a devil looked at him and told him, before you walked in here, another came here with a billion naira. And he left it. You can't classify an African preacher. But anyway, when they did all these classifications, somebody else argued with me and told me, Pastor, that's a lie. Go check again. And I checked again and I checked a man called Kenneth Copeland. He's worth 700 million US dollars. I was shocked. I checked it again and I was shocked. Copeland used to be a broke preacher. The guy suffered depression to an extent where Kenneth Copeland decided for two weeks when he attended a meeting for Kenneth Hagen. He took the books, the tapes, locked himself in the house together with the wife. For two weeks, there was nothing else they were doing. They were feeding on the word to break depression. All they studied was a wisdom to prosper. Today, he's classified to be the richest. Copeland wrote one check for Reinhard Bonke that was enough to help Reinhard Bonke, who was a struggling preacher in Lesotho down South Africa. He had only 40 members, had a dream to preach to 10,000 people in the stadium of Lesotho. And one check made this man called Bonke go back to Zurich, settle his own office, come back with the biggest equipment we have in the world today for outdoor meetings. One check. Copeland is still a man that supports that man. I see you rising to that level. I said again, I see you rising to that level. I repeat that scripture again. Look at it and he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you. For unto you that hear shall more. I declare to somebody here, more blessing, more health, more favor, more opportunities, more joy, more peace more blessing more open doors as you hear may god entrust you so hearing determines your transitions galatians chapter 4 and verse number one today i won't take much i just had a voice telling me miracles are being established in people's lives galatians 4 and verse number one listen to what the bible says now i say that the heir as long as he is a child deferred nothing from a servant though though he is lord of all Though you are a millionaire, I wish I had somebody here. Though you are designed to be healed. Though you are calling is a calling of favor. Though you are to enjoy victory. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. The Bible says as long as a hair is a child. 
is as good as a servant. Look at the second verse. It says very clearly in verses number two. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the fathers. So I want you to, of the father rather. I want you to look at verse number three. So that means he has tutors. Who are the tutors of this fellow? Look at the people that train this person. Are you understanding me? To come out of being a child. And these are the things that have been training some of you. <laughs> Whether you're keeping quiet on me. Are you hearing me? Look at your teachers. He says, even though when we were children, I mean, when we were children, we were in bondage under what? Come on, talk to me. Under what? So your tutors or your trainers are the elements of the world. In other words, the, thing that, the things that affect people in the world will affect you until you grow up. God says, I will allow the elements of the world. Sickness will harass you until you raise faith for healing. You're almost there. Praise the Lord. I will allow finances to harass you. You will talk like unbelievers until the day you get angry and you hear a word telling you, I built you to be a millionaire. I set you as a head and not the tail. I ordained all gold and silver which belongs to me that you will be a partaker of it. Now, some of you are already quiet right now. Some of you, the elements of the world will harass you with stress, will harass you with fear until when you will read the Bible, you will say in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Then all of a sudden you will rise up and say, I am tired. Tired of being stressed, tired of being sick, tired of lacking money, tired of suffering shame. When you will wake up, the elements of the world will bow. I gave you the story because one of the ladies we have now in this church actually is one of the people that is actually helping part of the work in Tarbo. Of the young woman who had actually been diagnosed with cancer until two months, she will only have before she dies. Cancer, it was very clear. It was on a stage where there was no reverse. When they told her that the lady was born again, I've always given you this story. She read the Bible in the book of Psalms where the Bible says, Isaiah rather, uh, the, uh, Psalms, yes, that beautiful is a, the, the, the death of a saint. She turned to God and told God, God, prepare to receive me. I'm about to die. So please prepare to receive your child. The moment she began to make that prayer, just some few days after she read Isaiah chapter 53, where she stumbled on the scripture that said very clearly that by his stripes ye have been made whole. It's as though the scripture came from the pages of the Bible, came alive and jumped into her. The woman shouted, I am healed. The moment she began to do so, every nurse, another person came to her and told her, don't waste your energy. You can't keep on shouting like this. The cancer has been eating you up. Relax. The girl said, no, I'm healed already. As she kept on speaking like this, they had to call for the doctor who was the one who came to confirm everything and told the young lady, why are you like this? And the lady said, very well, I got a different report. The report I just got is that I'm healed. The doctor said, you are lying. It is very clear. The diagnosis is there. We can even see it on your body. You are about to die. You should relax and call your family members. The lady said, no, I have read it. I am healed by his stripes. They went ahead and did the checkup. When the doctor did the checkup, he came back with the results the results were clear cancer cells were dead oh i know i'm talking to you you have already been harassed enough Oh, I wish I had an amen right here. You have been harassed financially so that you can rise up and say enough is enough. I can never be broke again another day. You have been harassed in your health enough so that you say enough is enough. I have a new word today. The word is he became poor that I might be rich. He that heareth shall more be given. Keep on hearing Keep on hearing. A woman that used to lead the meetings for Reynard Bonke in intercession, every time Reynard would go to various areas. The lady was the one at one time in a particular nation as a missionary with bleedings in her body because of fibroids that she had. She had four fibroids on her and she would bleed profusely. The woman cried before God, Lord, I'm serving you. How can you forget me? I'm walking together with you. How can you forget me? How can you even allow me in the missionary field to suffer like this? Lord, it is not just. She cried to God. Then she had a voice telling her the power of agreement. She said, Lord, what are you saying? And the Holy Ghost told her, whenever you agree, according to Matthew chapter 18, when to touch and agree concerning anything, it shall be done by my Father in heaven. The moment that scripture came alive in her, 
She began to rise up thinking of who she should agree with. Her condition was bad that every other person had gone out to the mission field. She was the only one remaining in the tent. So she was locked up and asked the Lord, who shall I agree with? There is no one here I can pray together with. And the Lord told her, Romans chapter 8 verse 26, the Spirit of God knoweth our infirmity and prayeth for us. The Holy Ghost told her, the Holy Ghost myself, I myself am praying for you. The book of Hebrews, the Lord told her that Jesus seated at the right hand side of the Father and daily maketh intercession for those that are the righteous the Lord told her I am also praying in heaven she told her God the Holy Ghost told her agree with me agree with Jesus and it shall be healed the lady went ahead and said father I agree with the prayer of Jesus I agree with the prayer of the Holy Ghost instantly fibroids disappeared slap your neighbor tell your neighbor neighbor something is about to come on you Oh, that's why you can't sleep in such meetings. When you are sitting here, everything coming to you can turn around your destiny. Whoever hears, more shall be added to them. I want to prophesy to somebody, we are not wasting time here. You are hearing something that is moving your business. Something that is changing your health. Something that is adjusting your finances. Something that is opening up your doors. He that heareth, more shall be added. That's why you can't keep on missing lunch hours. If anyone will miss, not you. And when you come, don't just sit to fill up the chair. Be hungry. Be hungry. The people that come to fill up the chair, but be the one that is hungry. You early in the morning, you're already woken up and prayed. You come in for lunch hour, you are charged. I need a word from God. I need a word from God. I can't sleep not when heaven is speaking. Not when heaven is declaring things over my situation. Not when heaven is turning around my matters. Beloved, I want you to understand there is what man can do. But the hand of man is limited. But I read the Bible. It says there is one that has an ear that is not too heavy to hear. And he has a hand that is not too short. To say there is one that can reach down deep in the pit. Pull you out from there. And establish your feet upon a rock. I feel like preaching right now. That is what you need to keep on hearing. I need a word. Lord, speak again. I've tried it. I've talked to people. I've tried to open the door. I've rebuked him. I've sat down with him. He's not hearing. But I know when you speak, everything will hear. When you speak, the wall shall break down. When you speak, the mountain shall be moved again. Lord, speak again. Oh, there is a God that can command things. He that heareth. More, Pastor. More, Pastor Christmas. God is about to give more. Some of you will be entrusted with riches. It's not your ingenuity. Some of you this year will receive a word that you will notice your marriage is all of a sudden in order. Just one word. I finish by giving you a thought. Genesis 12, God speaks to Abraham. Tells him, come out. And tells him how he will bless him. And that he will actually make him a father of many nations. Genesis 15, God repeats himself. Genesis 17, God repeats himself. But between Genesis 12 to Genesis chapter number 17, the wife of Abraham began to tell Abraham, by the way, I know God told you, you, you're the one who heard. Me, I didn't hear. <laughs> Are you understanding me? God told you. Some of you, that's one reason why whenever you sit in these meetings, don't leave, it, don't leave the revelation on pastor. Take it for yourself. And the woman went ahead and said, now listen, I'm too old. You can even see me. My whole body, my whole body is not in agreement where I am. There's no pleasure. So automatically this thing can't work. So since God did it, and I mean God said it, let's help him. Take this house girl and sleep with her. Genesis 12, Genesis 17. The Bible records very clearly that Abraham slept together with this, with this woman. And because Abraham had God, Hearing God releases potential. An old man had capacity to generate a child. Hey, I feel like shouting right here. Then all of a sudden, Genesis 18, God again walks into the scenario. A circumcised man called Abraham sees him, rises up and runs to them. The Bible records about three men, drags them back into the house. That's one reason I teach people. Learn to arrest every visitation of God. Brings them back to the house and the scripture records when they were there, as he served them, the Lord opened his mouth and said, where is Sarah? Oh, I wish I'm talking to somebody here. Oh, you need to give me a louder amen right here. According to the scripture, Abraham hears a word. And the Lord repeats that by this time, according to the time of life, your wife Sarah will receive a child. 
The Bible records very well, Sarah was in hearing proximity. It was only the tent that distributed or divided. She was on the other side. The scripture says, when she heard, she laughed. Now, what is the name of Isaac? I'm asking, what is the meaning of the name of Isaac? What is the meaning of the name of Isaac? <laughs> so when she was laughing, she was actually prophesying. I feel like shouting right here. Slap your neighbor, tell your neighbor you're about to start prophesying right now. I wish you got that revelation. When she was laughing, she was prophesying. The Bible says, and the Lord asked Abraham, is your wife laughing? And Sarah immediately said, I have not. And the Lord said, no, I heard you laugh. And so shall you receive. So now Sarah is hearing. So shall you receive a child, and his name shall be Isaac, for you have laughed. I want to declare to somebody right now, as you hear, you will laugh. And as you laugh, you shall receive your miracle here today. And so make sure this thing becomes your diet. I want to do a prayer. Let's stand up on our feet. The prayer is, Lord, let every season that has delayed, and let every season that has been regressing, let it be broken. Are you ready for that? Remember the verse, it speaks in Hebrews 5 verse 12. That while you ought to be teachers. Now a teacher is not one that only explains. is one that lives according to that standard. I can teach you by my lifestyle. Are you understanding me? For example, you find a couple that is fighting. And they are 20 years in marriage. They are crazy. How can you be 20 years in marriage and you are still arguing over soap? Where belong to me and I come a landslide? How can you be arguing over Colgate? You are crazy. I don't know that you understand. understanding. 20 years in marriage, you're still arguing over Colgate. You are saying, by that stage, you should teach others. I know there are people who are here right now. Where you are, you feel there are people who need your help. By the place you are, you are the one who's supposed to give money. But guess what? You're still asking for money. But you ought to be teachers. You need to be taught again. I want you to refuse that. I said, I want you to refuse that. I said, I want you. Today, God told me miracles will open as people receive this. I said, miracles will open as people receive this. Where you are, you cannot negotiate with the landlord. You should be talking about your own property. You should not even dream of moving to another house. That should not be your dream. But the truth is where you are, you're still on the level of trusting God for rent. Get angry and say, Lord, I want to die at for my own property. Lift your hands. Say, in the name of Jesus, I make a decree. My season changes from today. Because as I hear, shall more be given to me. Say, Heavenly Father, every delay that has been in my life, every regression that has been in my life, oh, you need to say to the authority, say, every delay that has been in my life, every regression that has been in my life, say, from today, I declare it broken. As I hear you, I am breaking forth. As I hear you, I am moving forward out of this disease, out of this challenge, out of this financial level. Say, I am moving forward maritally, spiritually. Say, I refuse to fight the same devils of 2018 the same problems say to the authority of 2018 lift your hands with your voice say in the name of jesus as i feed and now i change my level now i change my level now my finances my marriage my health 30 seconds open your mouth right now he that hear it speaketh begin to speak Come on, lift up your hands, open your mouth with authority. I want you to make declarations as you raise your hands. Don't be tired of lifting your hands as you raise and declare, Lord, I'm tired of being single. I know your promise. Your promise stands sure. You organize for all men to be able, every human being, to have a mate. I declare today, my wife, my husband, are coming in the name of Jesus. I'm tired of being broke. I declare a shift, a shift in the finances. You are moving me. You are moving me. I will be a teacher for many as i hear i prophesy i am tired of being sick lord today i shift into a place of health i shift today thank you lord 
Thank you, Jesus. Say after me, I decree my seasons have shifted. Come on, say it again. I decree my seasons have shifted. I where I was. I am not where I was. I have moved. I have moved. I have moved. I have moved in the name of Jesus. Say, I am not where I was. I have shifted in the name of Jesus. If I prophesy to people here, this season you will give out money freely. You will never be called and lack to give an answer. You will have more than enough. You will even pay rent for one year and choose what you want to do the remaining part of the year. I declare this year you will be healthy, more healthier than before. I feel miracles here, more healthier than you are last year. I make a declaration now every disease in your body dies. Every sickness in your body dies. Every bacteria that is not of God, every sickness that is not of God, I remove it from your body. You will give out the health. You will heal others this year. I command every single person that desires to be married. You are coming out of singleness. You are coming out of singleness. Whoever that man is, whoever that woman is, I command them to cover. I command every marriage to rise in prosperity. Rise in peace rise in victory I command every warfare to come and end here today thank you Jesus oh it's done 